it be live. Um, good evening. Good I'm morning in US here and then good afternoon some places. So we are here with our weekly so new Gambia platform. Today we're going to be discussing about uh, the consideration for IEC to use paper ballots. We're going to discuss you know the advantages and disadvantages and why now we're also going to talk about you know how to start new businesses uh the tips that we have from personal experience and what we you know read so we're going to communicate that with our audience so we welcome our panelists we have sam Cizé, indiana alice Germany and myself, New York. Welcome. So, guys, what do you think? I see um, introduction of paper ballot. What are your thoughts? And then, um, what do you think? Is it a good consideration, or is it something that we should just stick with? You know, the marbles we have. Uh, you want to come in, Sam or Alice? Ooh. Yo, thank you very much, Mr. Sawan. Welcome then. I know that Sam is going to wait a little. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I hear this discussion also all the time, and uh, it's interesting. I mean, it can be an advantage, it can be also a disadvantage. But uh, because, I mean, the advantage is it's more secure. You know, you cannot cheat cheat it uh, very simply as like like papers. I mean, papers can also be safe because we are using also, as I said here in Germany, also papers and nothing happened. You know, because uh, uh, everything is in the computer and things like that. So I don't know when we are using papers. I mean, I think it's better that we have the same standard, that everything is on the computer. Uh, I hope that they can make it, because they will not just make papers and try to count it, count the paper with the hand, and they can use the marbles as well, you know? So, I mean, it's an old age thing, what we are doing with these marbles. I mean, but the security is there. So many people are just paranoid, and then maybe, this time, having another president, maybe this, uh, they're talking about papers, so maybe people are paranoid to say, oh, maybe there will be cheating or something like that. No, I don't think. And uh, on the other hand, we have to see that uh, the world is going forward. <clears throat> you know, we also have to proceed. We cannot just uh, stay uh, a thousand years back. You know, I know, but something new is always for many people, they always have fear for something new. But the world is going, and things are going rapid, and the technology is going very quickly. You know, I think Gambia is one of the countries using marbles still. I mean, it's, it's very sore. I mean, they're, they're secure, but uh, I think when they go to papers and secure also everything, because the West, I think, in America, everywhere is using papers, and nothing happened. So they just have to secure everything then uh, nothing will happen. I think uh, we, uh, Sam can come and <laughs> say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam, well, thank you for that, that insight um, on paper ballot and versus the uh, the marble. You can come on, Sam. Yeah, you know, uh, thanks, Alice, definitely for uh, your input on that. I. Uh, I have a different feeling on that because when I first heard this, the only reason that I heard that um, there may be different reasons I don't know. I'm going to talk about what I know. The only reason I heard was um, ballot uh, using the marbles is more expensive. So IEC want to change it to uh, paper ballot. Well, my thought process is there is really Nothing wrong with changing to paper ballot because uh, you know the world is changing and people are changing for better. Um, um, 
the only thing to put in in the back of our mind is uh, the, the, the proper planning, because like I always say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Uh, there is a way to do everything. And if you don't do it right, it could be uh, 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 very uh, serious. It, it can have serious consequences. And, uh, and I think part of the planning, I can't say everything. They need to get the experts to sit together and talk about this and look at it. But for part of the planning, uh, number one, IEC, I think they're using too many ballot stations in Gambia. Uh, every small area with even a very small population of, voter, uh, of voters have their own ballot station, uh, polling station, if you would call it. Uh, I think they need to do a, an analysis of uh, how many registered voters do we have in certain areas you can add uh, in, in a certain areas that have very small population or the number of ballots you have, maybe they, they can come up and determine, let's say every 5,000 uh, registered voters in, in a certain jurisdiction or consequences, we can put a ballot in there, a, a, a polling station in there. Not, not 3,000 here or only 2,000 or maybe 1,500 people in this area and you put a polling station there, it's not worth it. They should be able to move to the other area and go vote there. So that will help them minimize and cut down the cost. That's one. The second part is, um, you know, the, the, the second part is when you're changing something, it really need to be communicated very well and make sure the change is for better, not for worse. Gambian people, for, first you need to look at how many people have been to school and educated uh, registered voters out there that will understand paper ballot versus the marble. Marble is easy for Gambia. Not very many people are educated, uh, especially the registered voters. There are farmers out there that have never been to school, don't know if you hand them a piece of paper with something on it, they have no clue what's on that paper. The only thing they could probably look for is a picture of a person, if it has a picture of a person. Other than that, they will not understand what polling station to go to and how to do it and what, you know, all of that uh, details need to be worked out first. By educating people, just like I said, um, during the, uh, uh, when they were going out for uh, electoral reform, when they were doing the constitutional reform, uh, they need to have that. I think this is the wrong time for them to start that because elections is just right around the corner. It's, it's, it's very important uh, not to confuse people by starting that now when they haven't even gone out to explain to people what paper ballot is. They need to have radio and television uh, commercials and discussions uh, sensitizing people uh, at least a whole year. This is important. They need to do that at least a whole year it can be two years, but at least a whole year, uh, letting Gambians know that we are changing. They want to change from marble to paper. And here is what people need to know. Tell people why you're changing it, when the change is going to take place, and how it's going to work. People need to understand the when, uh, where, how, and all that stuff. Uh, they need to know all of that before we get into it. Otherwise, it could be chaotic. Um, and, and, and the other thing is, from what I heard, if this is true, when they change the paper ballot, they're also going to change the on-the-spot counting by collecting all the paper ballots and transporting it to a central location to go count. That is a, a disaster waiting to happen. It's, 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 it's something that uh, Jemmy uh, used to do before we changed to on-the-spot counting. And when we changed to the under-spot under spot counting, that's when Jemmy uh, 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 lost the elections. Because under-spot counting, really, you can't cheat a whole lot. You cannot cheat there. You have representatives uh, from all political parties that have, have a, a, a pulling agent in that location. Whatever comes in, the marble comes in, and after the, uh, the election, they count everything right in front of them. So everybody knows the results right there in their polling station. If they start to take all these paper ballots 
and want to put them in vehicles and transport them, God knows what's going to happen. They're going to take some of my votes, my paper ballots, and put them in Alex's box, and uh, and vice versa. Alex's uh, paper ballot uh, uh, votes can go into Sawadee. I'll, I'll win. It, it usually favors the incumbent. It favors the incumbent president, the sitting president, and that's not a good thing for Gambia. We should not do that. We should not really do that. So, uh, to wrap this up again, it's more important that they they really look at the technicalities, the strategies and how they're gonna sensitize people, how they're gonna make this to be more cost effective, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, sensitizing people, let people understand why we're changing, when are we gonna change, and how is this gonna work, and how people are going to vote, especially people that have never been to school. They need a whole year of uh, uh, sensitizing. It, you know, put it on television, put it on radio station, let it go on everywhere, let everybody understand how it's gonna work before you do it, not before, just before elections. That's the wrong thing to do. And I don't really uh, uh, condone, I don't really, uh, uh, if it was up to me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be happening now. We will wait until after this election, then start introducing it and keep talking about it for the next five years before the next election. That way people understand, yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, I think you guys have really hit the nail on the head. Um, I just, we're gonna put some eyes on the cake here. Uh, yes, so the question to me is why now? Why now, not before? And then the fact that Jamme himself said it when he lost the election, we have the most rigid free system of voting. You know, we have more rigid uh, proof system of voting with the marbles because with the marbles you cannot um, cheat especially if it is on, um, on, um, on the spot counting so there is no manipulation of votes because everybody I mean every, every, every party will have a representatives watching during the counting there and they can recount there Say that again. Can you hear me? You're losing signal. You, yeah, you're losing signal. I mean, it's right, right now. Okay. Can you guys? Did I? Did you, did you guys miss anything? No, it's your back now. Yellow. Okay, but can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is that, um, why now? So there must be, an, that's, that's an alarming thing. Why are we doing this now? Because in the history of the country, since 1960, elections have been held with the marbles. There's a reason for that. Because most of our people are not educated. Most of our local voters, they cannot read and write. So why are you gonna introduce something sophisticated like that? If you definitely, first of, first of all, you cannot even secure those ballots. How are you gonna go and educate people how to read and write to be able to vote? So there must be, there must be a reason behind this. And I think the reasoning is because right now, you know, the system of government we haven't, and then the people we have in power, they, they're interested in search because it will give them room to manipulate the votes. That is just an alarming thing because who knows, you take a paper ballot and you count it and then you slot some ballots in. I mean, it's a lot of ways to manipulate it. But with the marbles, you can go back and say, especially if it is on spot counting and you have all the parties there, the party's representatives there, you can, you know, you can recount, you can make your case. You know, so I think for the kind of community we have, for the kind of society we have, for the kind of voters we have, we need to accommodate people so that they can physically touch something that they can put in the ballot of their choice. And that thing 
can be felt by hearing because when you, you put the bar, you put the marble in, it make a dong. So you know your vote actually reached the bottom. And you can be comfortable going home. You can also, it's visual to people that you are voting for, not only the candidates, but the ballot itself, it has the color of the party. Your party color, if you are blind of that, definitely, you are definitely don't know which party you, you belong to. <laughs> if you belong to ANPP and you go and vote yellow, then definitely something wrong with you because it doesn't, the colors don't look alike. And I'm pretty sure all these colors are different. Um, with so many parties coming on board, I don't know how many colors we're gonna have. So that, there might be an issue with that, but we haven't got there yet. But again, it's an upgraded one. If you look at the flip side of the coin, paper balloting is more of an upgraded ballot in ways whereby you, know, you can use technology to enhance things. People can vote overseas. So those part of it I like. <laughs> if you get again my if you want me to vote, I will not vote here by marble. So I can do my paper ballot, I mean and send and and, and mail it, mailing ballots. So it's good for people in diaspora like myself and you guys. So I think um we can probably make meet halfway people who are not here make it open for paper ballot. Makes sense. I mean, how many, right? Makes sense. I mean, how many diasporans, you know, I mean, diasporans vote matters, but how many of those would sway the election? Or if you want to definitely cheat on that side, perhaps it probably would be hard. But again, you know, our people, average folks are uneducated. So we need to figure out a way how to do this. I am in for it in one way, but I'm not in for it in another way. So we IEC need to be careful so that they don't compromise or they don't actually underrepresent people who are not capable to vote because they cannot read and write. So that, those are my take on this. I would suggest people outside to use paper ballots just strictly if we are, if we're gonna vote i don't even know if we're gonna vote because this whole this whole calculation is there you know hey if there if there's a vote am i gonna win so all this thing is there and then there are talks under the tables there are stuff going on so we don't know you know interest groups are you know lobbying we don't know how this whole thing is gonna end but to conclude I would just say that, yes, paper ballot, we can upgrade, but for now, let's stick with diaspora for that. And then people on the ground, let them use the marble. If that is combination can be taken care of, maybe that probably will work. But I'm not gonna do away with marbles because there are some Anybody? people who, are, who cannot vote and who cannot read and write and you cannot interpret for them. So. Perhaps if you want to interpret for them, you might end up swaying their vote. So we need to consider that. But thank you guys. Um, you guys yeah, will I'm add more to this topic. Yeah, I just wanted to see what Sam said here. If you fail to plan, <laughs> you, <do. laughs> you know. So yeah, I just see some yeah <laughs> problems also about this thing. Uh, what Sam said is true. If I told that they wanted to do it this year, they would have started even maybe two years ago, you know, trying to teach the people. Because for many people, they know only the marbles and you, are, you want to change it. So you have to train them. I don't know whether they can use the time now up to Alexa to train them and show them how to do it and you know what is the difference things like that uh, i think that was the best time for barrow store to use that also you know when we're talking about expensive and to save money then barrow store should also uh, 
could have been some people. whether it is party or not, who are going to meet the public also and tell them what is coming and teach them also what is uh, what they should expect and how they can go with these things. I think in that case, the government could have saved also a lot of money because they are going round. So before they make another trip again, going round, doing the same thing and take about some millions, you know? So uh, because it's not going to be something cheap. They have to go and meet the people and explain to them, or even if they should uh, connect with the TV stations that they try to inform the people. These are all costs. What is coming also, I don't know whether they calculated it, you know. So again, we are having a lot of parties. This time you cannot go on call us, Mr. Sawane. It's going to be very difficult. We are, we are having six, 16 parties and the rainbow colors are not that. So that means there must be some colors which are similar or whatsoever. And that, is, that can also confuse some people. So, I mean, when we go to paper, I mean, maybe they are going to put some boxes with the name of the party that people can also see who is that person with a picture so that they can drop their, their, their papers too. It's a possibility, but, and then uh, to understand everything or to have the information about these people, then they have to thumbprint. So the thumbprint, that's the other question. Are we well secured about thumbprints? You understand? Because the only thumbprints maybe people are busy with maybe is the NIA or I don't know. So, but this time, when you have to take two million people, they are thumbprints. Uh, whether the security is there to make sure that some people don't may use their thumbprint five times or ten times, you know. So that is also another cost coming because they have to secure that end too. Because if not, it's also very dangerous. I mean, the other side is the security they have on mobiles. That every you said it, every party is there. Uh, it doesn't change much because they're there, they can also see who is taking a paper and putting it where, you understand. So uh, in this case, it's just a matter of changing from mobile to paper because they can also uh, witness who is doing something. So there is a certain, but if not, I think they can, when they have to, they mean it, they have to start right now and then educate the people and inform them about what to do and how to do and things, and that's not, not easy. They have to communicate and the journalists will also help them. The TV station, the same thing, or they use borrow store and inform the people about it so that they can save money. I mean, if not, yeah, it's not bad though, because everything is going forward, then we want to also go forward, but the security is my problem. You know, I cannot, I cannot steal thousand mobiles in my car without nobody seeing it. But I can steal thousand papers without anybody seeing it. <laughs> so these are the things. Uh, and then when, whether we are also well secured, updated, to make sure so that with the security they have, they can secure everything, to make sure so that everything is okay, like the West. That's it, Mr. Sawane. That's all what I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alas, for that. Um, Sam, you want to add something to that topic before we move to the next one? Yeah, just uh, you know, just to uh, reiterate what I said earlier is uh, again, proper planning is important, and I don't think time is on their side for them to plan to change from marble to paper at this time. Uh, so. Uh, the best idea will be, uh, and this is all the responsibility of the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC. They are the, the, the institution that need to educate people uh, and, and how to uh, use this paper ballot. So they don't have time on their side to do that. Um, and I think 
it will be best, especially now that the, the, the draft 2020 draft constitution failed. I think we are better off to stick with what we have, the constitution that we have, which is the 1997 constitution and continue the, the, the marbles uh, for people to vote with. But IEC, IEC should be able to plan for the future and announce now that they are planning to change uh, marbles to paper ballot and the paper ballots, uh, all the people in the diaspora should be able to vote as well when they make the change, make the change for better. I don't believe in changing for uh, first, I don't believe in changing something that's, that's not broken, okay? If it's not broken, don't try to fix it, okay? Uh, at this point, uh, fix something to be better. If I have a car that's running perfectly fine, no problem. <laughs> I don't need to go buy a new car now, even though I know buying a new car is good. It's good. People are buying new cars. We're all going in the right direction. Is the 21st century perfect? I will buy the new car when that time comes when I want to buy the new car. I don't want to get rid of my old car that is running perfectly fine for me. Uh, I, I want to keep it until it is that time to change. But, but at the same time, when I'm ready to change and buy a new car because of the 21st century, I want to be able to uh, uh, get that education as to how to go from uh, shifting gears with a manual transmission to an automatic transmission. I need to know how that works. I need to know how to roll my windows down by putting, pushing the power button rather than rolling with the hand. I need to know how to lock my doors. I need to know how to do the cruise control, how to put the cruise control on in my car to be able to run it. I need to know all of those before I just jump into a new car and put my old car away. So it's the same thing. IEC need to educate people. Uh, uh, the three words that I use, um, what is going to change? When is, is the change going to take place? And how is this going to impact people? How is the change going to be effective? Or how is the change going to work? People need to know all of these way ahead of time. Like I said, at least one year. More than one year will be perfect. Two years, three years. So, and also, to be fair, since uh, IEC is there for everyone, they, they are considered independent. They're independent. They're not, supposed to, they're not supposed to be favoring one party over the other or over the, uh, uh, the incumbent over the other parties. It's best to do the announcement now, saying in 2026 elections, this is what we're going to do. That way, knowing that now nobody knows who's going to win the 2021 election, so you can't say we're pre uh, favoring the current president. Uh, we can't say we're favoring the incoming president because you don't know who that person is. So it's best to really announce it to be something that we're going to do in 2026 elections. Then before 2026 elections, one, we're going to make sure that there's a new constitution in place. That's going to include the diaspora to be able to vote. And we're going to change the uh, marble to paper ballot. That gives you five years right now. You have six years actually to, uh, uh, to be able to educate people. You know, the average, you know, anything that you make and anything you use, I mean, are you gonna change? You've got to think about the end user. The end user is that farmer that's in the middle of the country that has never been to school and don't know how to vote with paper. Think about that person, uh, put them in their shoes and think about you have five years to educate that person how to use the paper ballot. Once you do that and you do the right things that you're supposed to do in time, before the five years, by the time we get to five years, the whole Gambia will know about paper ballots. That's what needs to happen. I think it's the wrong time to start right. that now. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sam, thank you. All right, so just to wrap this up, um, you guys really, you know, dive in and then give us some insight about uh, the IEC consideration for paper ballot. I think uh, this election is very important. We need to make sure that we do things right. If we want to do things wrong, wrongly, uh, the country is going to plunge into a very big chaos. Why? Because we see the dynamic of politics in our country. And we cannot sit aside and then see it anymore because people have sacrificed their lives and then they fought hard to uproot dictatorship. 
we shouldn't be, you know, worried about going back to that. Why? Because we came too far. A lot of people lost their life. The families have not get justification. We see what happened. There is no um, justice still for people who died, who were tortured. We see TRRC, Janet Commission fail. You know, no, no, nobody has been prosecuted to the point that you can people can be happy about. We see what happened to the Constitution down in the drain, trying to bring that back, and then TRRC. Who knows? All these people might go free. The victim will keep crying. So it's endless. You know, we've seen all kind of hopes been drain, been going through the drain in the in the blink of an eye, all because of ourselves. So we gotta make sure we get set this record straight, especially when it comes to choosing our leaders. Each opposition party should make it a point of the duty to really post this they need to agree on things that make sense you cannot say that you know somebody cannot bring bogus laws or bogus agreements and you guys buy into it on spot counting must be held anything that has a contrary to that is something fishy about it have your representatives there tooth and nail make sure that the ballots are counted for even people who are voting I will go extra mile to make sure that they are investigated, whether they are Gambian citizens or they are citizens that were brought in. This is not a joke. We gotta make sure that whoever is winning this election wins it fair and square, not using uh, some financial political muscles in the expense of the country. These are very important things to note. And then I blame, I mean, anything that goes wrong, I will blame the opposition leaders because there's no such a threat like during German era, that you can be, you know, put in the corner and said, if you say anything, we put a gun on your head. That's not happening now. So everybody has the audacity to speak up and then challenge things. We have lawyers, we have, you know, all kind of things. We have international com community watching over. So this politician, some, I mean, this opposition party, sometimes they're very lousy. They just talk blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to like, holding people in, in the office, they don't. And that's why some of the things that we're saying, we're saying. So even this concept of bringing, you know, like uh, canceling the on-spot county, when I heard it, it was heart, heartbreaking. I mean, like, why would, he, why would we want to go back to that? You know, that gives you a room of people stealing election because you took those ballots, by the time they get to their destination, guess what happened? Somebody has already decided something. So that's why when I heard that they had to, you know, the opposition party didn't agree to it. I said, it shouldn't even have been an issue. Nobody should be in their right mind to try to cancel on spot counting. That's, 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 that's a suspicion right there. Now talking about the paper ballot, it's even more suspicion because, uh, you know, it, it will raise, if I'm in the political arena, it will raise an eyebrow to me that, you know, somebody really want to use technology to, to hijack, you know, this thing. So I would rather, you know, leave that now and then focus on, you know, all the reforms that we need to do, you know. So I will leave it to that. But, you know, this is a good topic. Um, we should make sure that, you know, the IEC, we, you know, we, we speak our mind, paper ballots, at least not for now. I mean, when, when everything stabilized maybe and our people's level have been elevated educationally, maybe that time we can think about it. You know, so that, that's that's just my final, you know, point on that. So we're gonna move on to our second segment of this discussion, which is the how to start a new business. As as we know, you know, business is the key uh gambian people need to get into businesses we need to um create small business so that we can create um, employment opportunities we can boost our economy uh we need support from the government you know we need contracts we need governments to help us you know uh get our footing give loans all those things to the gambians because 
when we employ people, we are employing people from our land, not from outside. The money stays is within. You know, so that's very important. In a, in a, when I when I was discussing with President Barrow the other time, 2000, I believe 17, that was one of the key things. How can we provide contract? How can we encourage our business people coming up? Instead of going to Simlex, Simlex and other people and giving them big contracts, who are gonna be giving, you know, like giving you on the table cuts. You're looking at that cuts, but that's not what is important. How, the important is you look at the bigger picture. How many people are gonna get employed? How many people are gonna be inspired by a Gambian having such a contract to make ID cards? How many people are gonna be inspired? You know, when you do that, give that opportunity to your own citizen. Yeah, because that citizen probably wouldn't give you the undercut that the Chinese man will give you. Doesn't mean you shouldn't give them the contract. You look at the bigger picture. But unless and until our people, our leaders are contented, you know, they are not greedy. They look for the interest of the country first. We're gonna be in this kind of, you know, situation. Our business people would just get discouraged. They will not do business as usual. You know what, foreigners will come. Look at the supermarket in the game. The Lebanese, they, they, how many people are in diaspora that can, who can create a, a, a supermarket in the game? It's many. Those, 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 those Lebanese don't have more money to, I mean, more money than these folks are in the diaspora. But what, just what happened? Once they start to establish it, they are stuff. You know, make everything difficult. Because why? I would not be, I'm not gonna be going to give money to my fellow Gambians just to, to you know, undercut money, just to, you know, just to, you know, give me those opportunity. I would say we all are equal here. So that approach, that tough stand is what is stopping these people, creating certain opportunity. And guess what? When it when you go there with an idea, hey, they will steal the idea. They will steal it and then sell it to somebody who has the same setup like you, and then that person they will make money out of. They will they will tell them that's how Jeremy used to do. They will tell the person, I need 15%, 20% cut. I blocked that other guy. He has the ideas, but you know what? This is what his ideas are. That's what our people do. I, 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 when, when some people spoke to me about this, I cannot name names, but it's heartbreaking. I have seen a couple of people who went to Gambia with ideas. The moment they opened their mouth and put everything in the blueprint, they, they, they propose it to the, the department that is in charge of that. Guess what happened? I'll call you back. That call you back, they are making negotiation on the side with somebody. Hey, this guy came to me. He, they can even lie. He offered me this thing, you know, like, but I think you are a better person to do this. And guess what? If you put a little more of his deal, you, you gotta get it. We're gonna leave, open all the loopholes for you. You know, so this is the deal. We, it, it, and all comes to corruption. The whole mother of this, the whole mother and father of this is corruption. Once we don't, fight corruption we don't look at all these things and make them punishable we don't deter corruption in our country businesses will not go so this is my take on this i don't want to experts are here who knows this more than me but this is just my you know I, i'm just I, I was just passionate about it that's why i even went far than this but um i can i, I can allow uh, uh, alice and then Sam to come in. Okay, Mr. Sawane, thank you very much uh, for your ideas there. I mean, <clears throat> you said it, the whole thing, that's why I used to say we can complain the whole day <laughs> if we don't keep away with corruption, we we'll always be discussing because uh, anything you see. Uh, is the father and the mother, and uh, this is something what Gambians are neglecting and uh, looking away. We have been fighting since uh, Jame went out, but you see, till now, with all these political parties, with all these governments showing their muscles, we cannot have the anti corruption bill done still, you know. So it seems as uh, if we even favor it, whether it's the parliament or the ministers or I don't know how to call it, people neglect it. 
whether it's the media or the journalists, the people neglect it. So that is showing you that I think even if you, as a person, if you want to go there and try to fight it, <clears throat> you have no chance. Because anywhere you look, it's corrupt. You said it yourself. So, I mean, When we don't solve that problem, even Barrow will have also problems. He used to say they close all accounts, it's only one account, but I always used to laugh because I, I know Gambia, I know Gambia. What the taxi driver is doing for corruption is not in that account, but it can affect the whole system. You know, what the corrupt policeman is doing is not this account and it's affecting the whole Gambia. So just to say we get all accounts in one, or oh, I don't know, in one account and we save whatever. Nah, it's good to do that. But the loopholes, you don't hold it, you don't close it. So it means it's just like in a drop of water, I mean, <laughs> on the fire, you know, so you solve nothing. Because it's a day light to see. It's deliberate to see and to hear. So after closing all accounts and having one account to control, it shows that there is nothing working with that, with that system and idea, you know? If we had started with the anti-corruption bill right away, I think Gambia will, you know, will be very happy today. But it's nobody's interest, so that is showing you. Even if the next government coming, whether they will be interested, you never know, because it's the, it's the cycle. I mean, it's, it's the cycle you know, and the mentalities. But still, we complain about problems here, problems there. But the problem is there. We don't have that. And when all Gambians are ready to do it, whether you are a politician or media, or I don't know how to call it, and force our MPs to sign this bill to make sure that it's working, because they have signed a lot of bills, but nothing like the most important one. They talk about everything, but nothing like the most important one because everybody is running away from it. So that is showing you our society. That is showing you our interest, whether we want to go forward or not, or want to stay corrupt. You know? So all these problems, I think it's not even should not even be my words, it should be words of the politicians on the opposition. But I'm just saying whether they will even talk about it, maybe a few. But these are our problems we have. So right now, it's just like a normal thing in our society. Anyway, for me, I just wanted to give some tips to people who want to make business, for example, uh, because I know that we don't have that in Gambia. Very sad, it's not in our school system, you know? That's why we used to talk about change of curriculum system, because the system the colonial people brought to us, which is sadly still there, and sadly, Gambians are still following this system since the time of independence, not a change, you know? That's why we have these disadvantages nowadays, you know? It's very hard to see a Gambian who can make a business like the Lebanese people you said, Mr. Sawane. They can do it. Maybe they have the chance also to, 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 to invest in the Gambia which every Gambian can do too. But these people, they know business. Maybe they are also business in their schools. They have business schools and business subjects. And uh, uh, we don't have it. You know, the technology likewise, you know, because uh, it's just now that they start uh, with, with, with computer and so, you know, even St. Peter's, our days, those days, uh, was there, there was nothing like computer. You know, but right now uh, they are also dealing with uh, the technology, which is very nice. You know, but for business, many Gambians want to make business, but the problem is sometimes where to start, where to go and have advice, you know? And uh, why, you know, there are a lot of things. Doing business doesn't just mean you buy a product as we know in Gambia, 
you sell it for more and have your profit. You know, I mean, that is the easiest way to understand it. But to make business uh, and live from it and then uh, build up your, your wealth, you know, that is the, what I just wanted to make some tips, for example, people, especially the youths who want to make the, their own business, just to wrap it as a very summary thing. For example, when we talk about business, we, we, we have to hit about the word first. You know, it came from being busy all the time, you know, then to business. You know, he's a businessman. You know, everybody is a businessman. Even the taxi driver is a businessman. The business, the word came from such people who did it those days. They were always on the run. You have to run for your products. You have to run for your money. You have to run for this, everything. So people were very busy. Those are days. These days are gone. Today, the wealthiest businessman is just sitting in front of his computer. So they are no more busy. They are busy though, but they are no more busy. Most of them are only flying for holidays in the Caribbean. So, but they had make their money. So the type of business we have in the Gambia, um, I have to break it down. Like people who really want to make business in the Gambia, for example, they first have to think of their capital. Which money am I going to start this business with? That's where, where somebody should start. Is it, have, do I have the money or do I have to go to the bank? So to have the money is your own risk. You go to the bank, it's your risk and the bank because, and, and you are under pressure because you always have to give the bank something. So you don't have that much time to take your time with the business, but your own, you have space. Not that much, but you, you have more, more, more time. And then uh, the most important thing is also the product. What many people used to forget. I mean, I cannot just go and say, I want to make business. I'm going to buy Apple and sell Apple. So you can do it because maybe you like eating Apple, you know? But the product you want to sell is very important. You have to take your time, sit down, think about it, you know? Who needs this product? What I wanted to bring in the market. Who needs this product? Why I wanted to sell and have profit. So your next question should be, why uh, do they like this product I'm having, want to sell, you know? So when you can answer these two questions, that can also help you a step to go forward. So the next thing is, where am I going to sell this product? This is also very important. The place, what many people used to forget, because if I see the way they make this business in the Gambia, you see somebody selling this product, two doors after you see the same person selling that product. So the competition is too high and everybody wants to gain something. You understand? People don't think of the competition. So this, uh, the place is very important for making business. How is the competition there? When I go to Bacow, am I going to be the only person selling this product? Or am I having thousands of people selling the same product? This is also something very important to think of before starting the business. So these are three topics I'm going to talk today, they are very important for starting business. I can help the people also with some, for example, how to go with the money with the business. For example, if I have a good and sell it, say, let's say I buy an apple, it's $10, I sell it for 20, I have 10, $10. So, but that doesn't mean that I have to go for something for $20. If I do that, that means the cost of the product is gone and my gain is also gone, which happens every time to we Gambians because we don't try to keep something back. Because if I buy the product for $10, I make 10, another 10, that is 20, that means I can only use the 10 
because the other thing I'm going to reuse it to order, to reorder, to make my business function. If I go exit that, that means I'll be left with eight or five. That means I'm gone. Because when it's time to reorder, there is no money there. So many people used to do that after they have forced winning, they think they can spend everything, which is very dangerous. That is no good business. Then you are not a business person. And the $10 you win as you gain, I would advise always try to take $5 from there and keep it somewhere. Try to see whether you have your fixed cost out of it. Your fixed costs are every month what you are going to spend. Whether it's your, uh, your food, the money you pay your rent, and all these things. So this, because these are things, they come every month. That's why they, so they call it fixed costs. They are always there. You have to calculate that, that they are also in and you will not have any problem with. You understand? Uh, and save always 10% from your gain. Don't go and say, okay, today I'm going to use it. That's also a problem of many people who spend money and say, ah, this is just, you know, they used to say, this is just, that is where the big money is. You understand? Many people make that mistake also. They go and spend here $2, ah, this is just $2. Ah, this is just one dollar. You know, this just uh, is a lot of money, what many people don't see. You understand? Which is also a very big mistake. You know, take this 10 percent from your game, put it somewhere. The, the other 10 dollars in, make sure that you don't touch it because you are going to reorder with that. Because the product you are going to get again to make you 10 is costing 10 dollars. So don't, don't even try to cheat with it, you know? So, but for us, we have uh, in Gambia also uh, this problem of the society, uh, uh, how to call it, relatives, problems, you know, and all these problems, you have to be resistant. You understand? Like, for example, now, we're all talking about Corona. If you should do come to Gambia, you'll see that it's full. So, Full, we are complaining we don't have money, but it will be full. Why? Because many people go, even if they don't have it, they go because of the society force. If you don't go, they'll ask you, ah, Mr. Swane, why are you there? You know, things like that. Or Mr. Swane is feeling sad to say, I didn't have that money. So when we say you should do, everybody is automatically having money, which is a fake. You understand? So as a businessman, you have to reduce that. You know, you have to sacrifice yourself. It's sacrifice at the beginning. It's sacrifice and hold to your plan. That's the only way you can succeed. But if you have $10, you get $10, you know is there. You say, oh, this is just, I can do it. No problem. You go there, you come, your business is gone because you spend more than what you plan. So through that, you cannot make a good business. So what I just explained here, uh, when you do that and take always from your win, always 10% and save it somewhere, this 10% in three years, four years, you will thank me, you know? But don't go and play with it. And this system, you can only rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and let nobody try to confuse you or, uh, you know, and you yourself don't try to take credit from the bank which is not payable or payable on time, which is going to affect your gain or your 10%. You know, try to leave, I would say, cut your code according to your size. You have to sacrifice if you want to be successful. You know, if people are spending money wastefully somewhere, you yourself, you have to ask yourself, should I do it? When I do it, what am I going to gain? Now? You know? So, I mean, I have to stop here because when we talk about business also, it's just like Gambian problem. You can talk up to tomorrow. But I think these are basic things. If you want to be a business person and try to follow this side map, I think you will not regret it. So Sam, 
I think uh, that was my contribution for young people who wanted to start something because we don't have to do schools. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Well, thank you, Alice. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. So I want to, uh, you, you both really, and uh, and a lot of important uh, stuff for people to know, uh, people, especially people that really want to get into business. Uh, one of the things that I'll contribute here, I'll say a little bit um, on top of uh, what you both said, um, using just a little experience I had in business since I'm in retail business in the retail industry in the United States here. Um, one of the things that I like to say is uh, uh, definitely Gambia needs proper laws to protect people and protect the businessmen as well, uh, businessmen and women. Um, and I, I know you talked about the anti-corruption bill, which I won't get into now because uh, very good laws with law enforcement will really pr uh, protect all the businessmen and women uh, and, and will help with the anti-corruption. Uh, but uh, uh, we won't get into corruption now because that's uh, its own topic. Um, but one of the things that I'd like to talk about is retail business. You know, when I say retail is for people that really want to go buy stuff and come and sell it and make uh, some money out of it. Um, there are certain things that people need to understand. Uh, in the United States here, uh, when people want to get into business, First, you really need to get proper planning and analyze what you need, because when you want to get into business, uh, there are certain things that certain laws that you have to follow. Uh, we call them in the United States here. We call them uh, 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 for those businessmen or business uh, businesses in general. We call them uh, federal contractors. Uh, one of the things that I did in my career here is. Um, there was a time that I was a training specialist and as a training specialist for my company and I've passed that now. But one of the things that I used to teach is uh, my company hired people that are going to be store managers managing a business for the company. And uh, they will send them to my class and I'll teach them a whole week. I'll teach them all the things that they need to know as federal contractors and how to run a business. Uh, very, very important. Uh, uh, so starting a business, taking up from where Alice left off. Uh, if you do everything that Alice said, and this is one I was talking about as well, it, it's very important when you're starting a business, you know, think about what are you going to sell in location? Where are you going to sell your products? Think about all of those and do your cost analysis because if you just get into business because you want to make profit, you're going to fail. Making profit is a result of running a good business. Okay. Yeah. And, and how do you run a good business? There are certain things that there's a lot of information into this uh, and things that I used to teach people. Um, like I said, for, for my company, I mean, when they hired people, and these are college graduates, they get out of college, they come in with uh, uh, degrees and they want to become store managers, they come to my class and I teach them. Uh, we have a curriculum that I follow and teach them all the things that they need to know. Um, and from the law standpoint and all coming down to managing that last penny uh, on the business there. So, um, for, I'm going to focus on people that want to open a retail business, just a small retail business, because you normally want to start small and then expand your business down the road. Uh, for a retail business, uh, like I said, location is important. What are you going to sell? Uh, think about the competition. What is the cost of goods? Uh, uh, marketing and merchandising is very important. How do you market and merchandise your products? Uh, like Alice said, if you're going to sell something, somebody open a store that is selling batteries, for example, and you want to sell batteries, you really shouldn't go next to him and open your store and sell batteries as well. You really shouldn't do that. That's not a good thing. You know, you, 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 know, you, you have to pick a, a better location somewhere that you can sell your products, but also be competitive. And, and, and being competitive in business, what we did in America here and what we do and what competitors do is, you really also need to do competitive price survey. Look at 
what your competitors are selling. And if you're going to sell the same thing, what prices are they selling? Those are very important. So, and so you can follow the proper marketing and merchandise and strategies to be able to sell your products, but also using uh, what we call product turn. Product turn in business is know how many times can you bring the same product in and sell it if you bring a product in and it sits on your shelf in your store for a whole year that's not good that product is not turning you should not be bringing that in you shouldn't be selling that you should be bringing stuff in that you bring 50 off and you sell all 50 bring 50 more you sell all 50. Now you can go to uh, uh, 75 of them, you know, and, and, and try to sell them as you bring them. The more you bring products in and sell them, that's called product turn. You need to make sure your products are turning and not sitting on your shelf because if they sit on your shelf, you have a whole big store full of merchandise that is not moving and not selling. You're holding all that money. That capital is sitting in your store. It's not in your pocket. It's not going to the bank either. It's sitting in there. It's just money that's being wasted in the store. And at the end of the day, what's going to happen is uh, some of them are going to expire. You're going to run into expiration. And when they expire, what happened? You write it off. You have to dispose it because you really, according to the law, you really shouldn't, especially food products, you cannot sell expired product to people. So you're going to eat that cost. So you have to be very strategic in what you do and what you sell, where you sell it and how you sell it following the proper merchandising and marketing strategies uh, and, 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 and do it. So the other part is in Gambia, when people go into business, you sell, say you buy a product for $100, uh, $100 and you sell it for $150. And you say to yourself, I made $50, $50 a profit. Well, that $50 is technically is not a profit. It's what we call margin. What is margin? Margin is retail minus cost. Okay. If you take the retail of the product minus how much it costs you to get the product, that's the cost of the product. So that $100 is that you bought the product with is your cost. You sell it for $150. That $150 that $50, extra $50 a day is your margin. So if you take $150 minus the $100, you're left with $50. That $50 is your margin. So if you collect the $50 uh, margin from one item, another 50 from here, another 50, and another 25 here, and 30 from here, 100 from here, you add all of those margin dollars, we call it margin, margin dollars, you take it to the bank, okay? You do that until the end of the month. At the end of the month, you, you, you pay your cost out of it and all expenses out of it. Uh, the, the shop that you have, you have to pay rent for that shop. You have to pay the utilities for that shop, electricity, water supply. Uh, if you have ice bead in the net there, you need to pay that as well. When you pay all your expenses out of that margin dollars that you got, the margin dollars that you get, Whatever is left after you pay all your expenses is called profit. That's when you make profit, okay? So profit is not because I sold something, I bought something from this and I sold it for the, that's my profit. That's not your profit yet. Profit comes after you pay all your expenses in cost of goods and expenses out of everything. Uh, when you pay your expenses out of your margin and you're left with money, now you're making profit. But if you pay all your expenses out of your margin dollars, and you have no nothing left, or well, you didn't make any profit. <laughs> maybe that's the wrong business for you. <laughs> you know, maybe that's not a good business for you. You are in business because people are in business. Maybe you're in business because you think you're selling, you're making money, but you're really not making money uh, because you have to hold yourself accountable and look at all of these numbers to be able to understand what is retail and what is cost and what comes margin. Margin is retail minus cost. That's your margin. And how do you get profit? Is profit is you take all your uh, 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 margin minus all expenses out of margin. 
then what you're left is what your profit is. That is profit. And at some point, of course, when you start a business, you have to put in time and effort after you do all the analysis, after you do all the things that you need to do for the foundation, then you need to think about at some point, you need to be able to pay yourself. You need to be able to get to a point where you can create a salary for yourself out of that business. When you, uh, and when you start to do that and you can create salary for yourself, that becomes an expense as well. If you have employees that you hire that will run the business for you, they are expenses. Their labor costs as part of your expenses. All of those need to be taken out of your margin before you call profit. So it's very important for people to understand all of those. And of course, uh, license fees, uh, registration fees, and all those expenses that you need to pay, all of those are considered expenses and they all need to be calculated into the business to be able to do that. And, and you know, I, one last thing and I'll, I'll stop here and give chance um, is when you're selling stuff, you know, in America, even in Gambia, you go to stores, you go to supermarkets, every supermarket sells butter. Every supermarket will sell eggs. All the stores here will sell uh, 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 bread. Uh, they will sell cigarettes in, in America here. A lot of stores will sell cigarettes. You can get all those things. This is where competitive pricing becomes a place, uh, becomes uh, important. You need to be able to do competitive pricing by going into these stores as a secret shopper and be able to look at what price they're selling it at for and how can you move your products faster? Well, if everybody is selling a, a, a dozen uh, uh, of eggs in a crate for $10 is in Gambia, I'm giving an example. I'm not saying what that's what it costs. If everybody is selling for $10 and the, 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 the cost of that crate of eggs is uh, uh, say is $3. It costs them three dollars, but they're selling it for ten dollars. That means they are all trying to get capture seven dollars margin out of it. Well, if you're smart, try to sell yours for less. Don't sell it for ten dollars. Go nine fifty, or go nine dollars. Then you'll have more product turn. Think everybody will be coming to you to buy the product. They will be buying more product from you because. Yours is a little cheaper, but that's a good, good strategy. You're doing that because you, you and you have to write it off. So the more you turn, the more inventory you bring in, that becomes a better volume for you. You may have less margin, but the, the more volume you have, your margin will end up being more margin than theirs because you have to sell everything because everybody sells at the same price. We need to stop, stop looking at each other. We need to look at what can differentiate me from that person because they have eggs, I have eggs. They have cigarettes, I have cigarettes. They sell uh, bread, I sell bread. They sell butter, I sell butter. So why should they come to me? You have to ask yourself that. Why should they come to me and not to those people is what is, is, is the difference that you can make. Make a difference for yourself. Don't look like everybody else. That's what's going to make you successful. I'll stop here for now. Thank you both. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Sam. A, um, I think you have also. Yes, I think Sam has um, actually, um, you know, sparked something in my brain while he was speaking. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that because uh, my brain is waking up now. Um, so, <laughs> not because of the coffee, but because of you guys. Um, so. What I'm going to look at is the uh, the overheads in business, and also what some refer to as profit. You know, because we have a lot of government businesses here in the diaspora. Um, the reason why we fail, I will start with the profit. When they start their restaurant businesses or other businesses, they're not looking at the costs of the business. The Incurring costs, the cost that is, you know, happening every coming every month. What they're looking at is the money being received. So once they see that, gee, we I'm I'm making money. They they think all that money is a profit. In the back of their mind, they think that, gee, this business is good. 
Well, look at all these clients I'm getting. I'm getting thousands of dollars a day. But what they need to factor is you have to take everything into account. Your bills, your food, your workers, okay? Salaries, salary increase, bonuses, okay? You have to pay yourself, pay your time. You're not, act like you are working. Don't act like you own the business. Equally, what you're gonna do in another employee, employer's place, act the same approach. Don't come around and bossy boss yourself like, oh gee, I'm I own this, you know. Gee, look at all these people working for me. No, <laughs> and you don't do anything. When it's in reality, you may not be making any money. <laughs> you actually <laughs> lose the money. It's not time for that yet. You know, this is the beginning of your business. Work hard. You if you had to put in put in overtime, the first two years, do that. It's all going to pay off until the business stabilizes. But you pay yourself. Exactly. Pay yourself. Pay all your employees. Give them incentive to work. Look also at areas that you can hire or you can eliminate. And this is why costs come into play. I'm a very big fan of cutting on costs. Cutting on slicing all the unnecessary waste, I call them. If I look at this place here, can we do without this? Yes. Or oh, how can we get it keep cheaper? Don't underrate any little thing you are saving when you're doing business. If you have to cut a, a gas, you know, like a, you know, a, a, you know, um, a gas for your car from traveling from point A to B, do it. If if it is not gonna affect your business. So once you identify all the places you have to cost and look at areas that you probably need to invest. So this is a lot of work by itself. And if you're a store manager or you are a business manager, this is what you need to be doing. And this is where the difference comes. People just think like, you know, people make money just because they work very hard. It's not that. I don't think it's how work, how hard you work. How smart you work. How smart you work. Yeah. How smart, how much you use your brain before your power. I think that's what happens. And if you have done your homework right, you would make money. So cut on cost is very important and overheads. If you don't, can do without an office, please do. That office money you really you're gonna spend on renting that office, put it on ads. We have a lot of tools nowadays. In the past years, maybe 40, 50 years ago, there was no internet. You have the world wide web interconnected. It's a source of free promotion. You can even do ads that you don't have to even pay much on. So these are the things that as a business person, you can look. Yes, it's good to have a brick and mortar kind of business, which is storefront, physical location, so people can run into you. But people are doing away from brick and mortar now. They are doing everything digitally because we are all connected. You put something on YouTube, you put something on Facebook, you, we couldn't do this. We couldn't do this platform 50 years ago. But now it's possible. We are all in different geographical region and we are talking and sensitizing. So message. Hello, Germany. Yeah, exactly, you Germany, you are in, uh, you are, you are in um, um, Texas. Indiana, Texas, and Indiana, know. and I'm in New York. Indiana, so, yeah. Yeah. so I think how people need to take a bold decision. And then when you're doing business, you have to get, you have to go in there, with, you know, either you win or lose. But that risk is what makes you succeed. But if you sit down and look at that big money, you say, ah, I have 5,000, but 
I don't want to lose it. That 5,000 can sit there for years. Perhaps if you put it in a, in a bank, it may make probably how many dollars? One every year, maybe you get maybe hundred dollars if you're in the Gambia on top of it. What's that gonna do? But if you wisely take that business, you do your homework, do your research, but you're gonna go there with faith. Hey, I think I've done enough work. I've done my homework. I did what I need to do for my part. And I'm gonna take a risk. Life is risk. We had risk our lives to be here. We could have been dead, just making up here. But if you don't make risk, you cannot gain. Risk without a gain, it's not happening. And businesses that make big booms are the ones that take huge risk. If you look at IBM, all these great businesses, Apple, the people who owns them, they take a huge, they don't take a baby, a baby step. They, take, they get into something that they don't even, it's a huge risk. They can lose a lot of money. So our Gambian brothers and sisters, we need to build the heart to get into business. Let's not be too comfortable working for someone. Listen, I work for someone now, I must admit, but that's not, that doesn't mean I enjoy it. That doesn't mean, because I don't like to be told, first of all. <laughs> I don't like that alarm clock to wake me up. Damn, eight o'clock again. It's kind of psych psychologically, it's kind of very, a very, very hard thing. I don't like to take that subway, if you are in New York, train, mingling with hundreds and thousands of people, pulling and pushing, getting into transportation to go. Thanks to COVID, I, I have to walk from here. I don't have to, you know, COVID had one good thing, by the way, Alas. Don't, don't be blaming COVID for everything because I'm working from home. I, uh, I, I'm pretty yeah, sure Sam is working from home. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I, I, I only think of my people in the Gambia. Yeah. You know, um, that's why we talk a lot, but people don't seem to hear. Because yes. if you go there today, you'll think that there is no COVID in the world. And that is very oh. dangerous for our society. Our yeah. So, so to sum up, I'm just saying, add, adding into this piece, we need to be more innovative. We need to take risk. The little money that you know we have, let us not look at it like I think you know business. It doesn't take you a degree to do a business. Any person with a brain, unless you are a toleo, may I don't you don't know. You just keep giving your money. People need to money people. People that way, you know, you're not gonna do business. But if you can use your calculation and know what is nimwe change dealer, you can tell if this is a change, good change or not. You can, you know, money. You can do business. Business don't have to be have to have a master's degree. People like Basiru Jawara, all the great people, businessmen, they haven't get um all those higher education. So every Gambian should look at ways to devise things. And you know what is the funny thing? If you guys are watching all these great artists, all these great basketball players, guess what happened when they retire? Business. Michael Jordan, all these people, because they know business is something that you can do until the day you drop. There is no age discrimination in business. You cannot say that, I, you can say I'm old, I cannot play basketball, I cannot sing anymore. But with business, it can be, you can be old until you are dropped and still be making money. Because you know why? Certain properties like housing, you put a house and you can be sleeping, making money. You invest on those. You don't need to do much. You rent in it. People are paying your bills for you. Fellows, I mean, I think it's about time for us to take a bold step and get into these things. Let's not comfortable for, oh, I have a job. I put on a necktie going to a job. I put on a suit. I look good. The ladies will tell me that I'm working. So, you know, I'm important in the community. It doesn't make sense. Trust me, somebody can be doing those suits. They're making less than you doing these businesses. You compare them actually. President Barros used to say that when he was doing business, he was paying people who are degree holders. 
So business people are important. Not, not like business people are not. Business are not. I'm showing you that to have the idea how to make the business, this is the goal. Exactly. Yeah. If you are happy to, or people who are listening to us and try to write it down, the tips and tricks, it's a goal, you know? These are things you don't learn it from the university. <laughs> you know, only university of business. You know, and uh, business people don't tell you certain things. That's why many people don't still try to understand business actually, you know. But when we take our way, I mean, in Gambia, you know, which is more concerned, you know, here, for example, in uh, uh, Germany or America, you have to study it or have a paper for it or something like that even to do it. In the Gambia, it's very easy. Easy that uh, nobody asks you. People are more interested about your product, but still you need to know how to go about the whole thing to be successful. Because everybody is making business, but who are the successful people? To be successful, you need these tips and tricks. Like Sam said, some people, they have the whole store full. They are not making money. They don't have money. But people will be surprised when they come in, they see everything is full. They think that this man is making money. But he's not selling. If he doesn't mind, at the end, these things are expired, he's going to throw them away. That means a big losses. You know, so these are things people need to know about business because if not, it can also be fatal, you know? Um, uh, and these things, what Sam said, everything full, you cannot sell it. We call it here in Germany, a dead capital. You know, a dead capital because it's capital, you can see it, all these goods is mon are money, but you cannot start anything with it because you have to wait again till people buy. So if you don't have money, uh, to keep you waiting for that, that person to buy, you go, go, go bankrupt, you know? So we're talking now here about successful businesses. And the earlier people know what to look on and what to take care is better for the future, you understand? And then try to make sure that they have a special program that can also help. The idea of some making 50 cent cheaper is also a very good trick. And the next thing is uh, to sell a product what is special that can also attract people. And this thing you can sell it also just like that because you hardly get competition. You know? But when I go to Gambia, I used to laugh, for example, uh, sometimes I used to say, when everybody is selling the same product, then who is going to buy? And it's oft the case that people don't look at uh, the product or the place. You see this person is selling uh, mangoes, the next door is selling mangoes, you know? So if they don't choose the places, you know? You have Western Union here on the street. After three houses, you see somebody also with Western Union. So people don't also try to pick the position. I mean, places and things like that, we, we can help. You know, because it will work very good when you look on these tips that Sam gave or special product or place. You know, that will take your... So thank you very much. I think Sam uh, needs to say something too. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Alison, Mr. Swani, both of uh... You know, the more we talk about this, the more we all uh, think more. You know, sometimes when you start a conversation or you're going to talk about something, you don't think about everything in there until we start talking and somebody start talking, then more comes to your mind. You know, and uh, I, I am thankful that, uh, you know, some time ago, my company also uh, paid for me to take a, a course with uh, DBM 
and the course that I took was uh, entrepreneurship, how to become an entrepreneur. And, and technically, I can call myself an entrepreneur because I went through all their courses uh, for different levels. Uh, and and, and uh, plus the experience I have in teaching uh, um, retail business management is, is important. It really helped me and it really opened my eyes uh, to be able to share some things with people. One other area that I want to talk about, actually two things I want to talk about is one is that when you're running a business, you know, you, you need to think, think about some things. There are four things that customers look for when they go to a business. All right. Those four things are very important to customers. Uh, first one I will say is promptness. When you walk into somebody's store, are they getting up immediately and greeting you and taking care of your need? Or are they on their cell phone? That's very important. Promptness, where you walk in and they take care of you right now. No waste of time. You don't have to wait in long lines. And the line is so long that it curves around, it goes over there and people are in a hurry to go to places. People don't have time for that in this world. Okay, so promptness becomes very important when you run a business, when you have products that you sell in your store, be very prompt at your customers. They walk in, say hello to them, greet them, good customer service, and, and get up and take care of them. Don't let them waste uh, uh, waste their time. Don't waste their time. You should be the one wait, waiting on customers. Customers should not wait for you. So promptness is very important. Now, the other part is dependability. Dependability is very important. If you sell products that people are buying and you have a good inventory turn in there, you're selling a lot of products of this certain kinds and certain things, and you've looked at your business, what you're selling, you're selling, you bring in more of that, what you're not selling, you drop it so you don't sit on that money in there. It's very important that you understand that customers are going to depend on you. They know when they need palm oil, is your store that they go to and buy their palm oil. Do not run out of palm oil. Very important. Do not run out of the palm oil because people want to depend on you. If you keep running out of your products before the next one gets, next consignment gets there, what happens is people change their buying habits. If I come to you to get palm oil because I used to buy palm oil from you and you run out, you don't have it. Well, today I want palm oil. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm gonna to go to somebody else that sells palm oil. If I go there and they give me very good service, chances are next time when I need palm oil, I'm gonna think twice. I'm gonna say, well, last time I went to so-and-so store, they didn't have it. I usually buy it there, but they didn't have it. I don't have too much time. I don't wanna go there today also and they don't have it and end up going to the other place. But the last time you didn't have it, I went to the other place. They were very nice to me, very prompt. They had fresh palm oil. I was, be able to, I was able to get it. Well, today, guess what? I'm going there again. You start to lose business because of dependability. The other part is product satisfaction. Make sure your products are clean and fresh. Don't let products sit on your shelf and collect a lot of dust there. Meaning they're sitting there for two months. Nobody even dust around. Nobody cleaned them. They're there and they're not fresh, especially when you're selling food stuff. Uh, if they're not fresh, they are near their expiration date people tend to stay away from that as well. So uh, product uh, uh, satisfaction is key. And the other four, uh, out of the four things, I said promptness, dependability, product satisfaction. Uh, and the, the fourth one is employee competence. If you have people buying and uh, selling stuff, if you, if you employ people to work for you, they need to be very competent in what they do. They need to know that when customers walk in immediately, they throw in that cell phone away and go take care of them promptness. And they know where everything is in the store. And they know how every, what, what, uh, what they need to do to sell it to you. They know how to sell something to you. Not, not, not get stuck somewhere and have to pick up a phone and then call somebody and say, so how do I do this again? That's not employee competence. That's not good. If you have, employee have to call people all the time or a lot of times is not good for you because people don't have time to wait for them to call and, and, and for example, cell phone companies that sell credits to people. If people go to buy a credit or something and, and you have a new employee there that you have not trained very well and they keep calling to be able to sell customers, uh, help customers, that's not good. That's not important.
competence. Employees need to know what they're doing and how to do it well. So that's those are four things that people look for, and, and and of course other things. But if you can get these four things right, you'll be good. Well, of course, with of course it all starts with that's all part of good customer service, great customer service. Be able to provide that customers. You know, uh, I think this opens up my own mind now when I talk about customer service Ooh. because. You know why people, the number one reason why people don't go, go back to a business? There, there, is, there are a list of things I can say. People don't go back to a business because you always run out of products. People don't go back to the business because of other friendship. Other people convinced them to go somewhere, somewhere, uh, somewhere else. People don't go back to a business because they moved away from you. People don't go back to the business because they died. But how many people die? The number one reason why people don't go back to business is the service. is because of an attitude of an employee in that business that does not know how to talk to people, does not know how to handle people, does not create promptness, does not create the better customer service for people. An employee that has bad attitude, a rude employee, is the number one reason why people will not go back to that place. If you go to a place, you keep going to a business and, and you have a very rude and a very bad attitude employee there that don't know how to handle people, that is going to turn people off. They won't go back because when customers walk in, that employee is always sitting down, is always on their cell phone. It always makes people wait first. Let him finish talking or uh, checking his text message or replying to somebody or somebody that wants to look for something on Facebook. Customers walk in, they don't even acknowledge that. And on top of that, being rude and known, not knowing how to talk to people, right? That is the number one reason. So indifference customer services is the number one reason why customers will not go back to place. Not because they died, not because they moved away, not because they went to a competition, not because they went somewhere else. Is the, the number one reason is because of that bad employee you have at your place. So we need to think about that. And last thing I will conclude this is uh, uh, is uh, inventory management. If you have a business, you bring in products in, you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to hold your store accountable. You need to be able to manage your inventory because not all the inventory that you bring in will sell. Some will spoil. Guess what? People will be stealing some stuff. People will steal. You have shoplifters. You also have dishonest employees that are gonna ring stuff and put it in their pocket. They're gonna sell stuff. If you're a store owner and you think you're making business, just like someone said, you know, in a restaurant, you think you make a business, you own this restaurant and you have all these people come in to eat there. Yeah, without realizing your cook is taking a whole case of chicken in the back door, giving it to somebody else to take it home. They're gonna sell it somewhere else. You know, you don't realize all the things that you can lose in the business. That's why inventory management is very important in a business. You need to be able to manage your inventory, count what comes in, count what you sold, and you need to be able to count what you're left with. If I bring in 100 <laughs> items of this, this particular, I pick any item. If I bring in, uh, bring in uh, say, 100 loaves of bread into my store, okay, <laughs> and I sell 70 loaves of bread, well, I'm going to check to make sure I have the money for 70 loaves of bread. But I also want to go back and check how many more bread do I have on my shelf? I need to have 30. And if I don't have 30, something happened. This is inventory management. You need to be able to audit yourself and be able to see what you're bringing in and what you're selling. How much should you have today? If you count your store right now, how much should you be sitting on? If you're not doing that, you could be losing a lot of money and you think you make money and be actually losing money. Before you know it, down the road, you're gonna see your business going down, going downhill. You can't even pay your bills and the next thing you know, you close your doors. That's how people you fail. You always have to have your, or one your way eyes fail. on your computer. Exactly, right. <clears throat> exactly. So anyway, yeah. So I'll stop here. There's a lot to do in business. I can't yeah. talk about all I'm of glad, it. I'm, These are things yeah, that I'm, just I'm glad that, I'm glad that we are you know, uh, diving deep in this because it, it's about money. And then the more garments make money, the more we will develop, unless somebody is eating it from us, the more we will um, become 
uh, an, 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 an economically strength com uh, country. One thing that, another tip that I wanna throw out there, you guys have really, really mentioned very, very important points. Customer service is very critical. Some people would think, um, okay, I have a business. If people come, fine. Like um, what Sam was explaining, when people come here on your cell phone, you act like you are not interested in them. I have done that many times. I go into the stores, especially in the Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. I live in Ah, I must, I'm, uh, you know, they are talking. You know what I do? I walk away. You lost the business right there. In order to succeed, you have to compete for every customer. You have to make people feel welcome. You have to make people know that, you know, listen, treat the customers happy. Customer first. This notion is very important in our businesses because otherwise, when somebody give them that love and that, that kind of like compliment, they will come more often. Get some goodies. You know, goodies, even candy, put it in their bag. You know, get this for your kids. A token of appreciation after somebody buys something from you is a huge deal. That person will always remember that because you know why? The next person hasn't done it. That's why most business strategies, they look into all that. And beside that also, give discounts, have some coupons. You buy this, you get this free. Buy two and get one free. You know, the people don't understand. There's a lot of way to, you know, uh, to kind of like, uh, you know, like uh, give some incentive and then be at the edge and be the edge of the curve. It's not all about, you know, taking, taking, taking. No, you have to be smart about it. I can, okay, I can allocate, let's say 500 as a giveaway. But you know what? I'm getting 20 customers instead of 10. Look at the logic fellas. Business is all about work. It's all about strategies. And trust me, our country, we are not being, this is not taught in school. You go to Amitage High School where I went to or other schools, they teach you mathematics. They teach you all these calculus, which you might not ever even use in the, you know, <laughs> for the rest of your life. Oh man, Alice is smart. He's a, he's a genius. He have an A, but they don't teach us some of these things, some of these strategies, some of these tips, some of these things that can make our life easier. We can use you know, at, uh, you know, in, at our jobs, at our daily life, even in our family, within our family. If you have five kids, opportunity cost five kids. You cannot buy all those kids those sneakers. You have to look at opportunity cars. Look at the one. If this can come past this, buy something that can be passed to the other one. You have to play logic. But our people, that's why as black people, do you know why we still not economically strong? Because misplacement of our priorities. I let's get this, I will get that. Sam get this, I will get that. You get a sneaker, I must get it. What is, look at what is in the sneaker before you buy it. Is it not to cover your feet? What else can do that beside that brand name sneaker, that Jordan sneaker? So white people, they look at, they calculate. That's why you can have the same job with a white man, getting paid the same way, and he will be able to do more than you. Because he's gonna come with this shirt. It's not Tommy Halfager. It's not Nike, whatever. It's a shirt. And it's gonna last long. And I like the color. Why am I gonna buy Tommy Hilfiger? Looking nice. <laughs> because Alice bought it or somebody. No. Be content of your quality. Who you are. That's what proof who you are. So I think the, when it comes to business, we have to look at also the way our people spend. I think our next topic, we, we need to talk about spending because I think the reason why we fail is not only 
We don't make money. We make money, but we don't save money. Michael Jackson was a bill was close to what you can imagine. But do you know when he died? He was on a poverty level. Somebody who 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 owned a ranch. But do you know why? Because of spending. Because of spending. Because he spent anything his eyes can cut. MC Hammer, he used to have horses, range of horses when he became famous. Do you know why he failed? He has an entourage. Dion Sanders, all those people following him. But do you know why he's broke? He was just seeing the money come in and spending, he's spending. He, there's no calculation, there's no strategy, there's no advices. Mike Tyson is going to boxing now because of the same issue. So we need to wise up. <coughs> but my uh, name, when we're getting into businesses, let's make sure that we also understand our businesses is not about spending. It's about saving, saving money, looking where to save, cut the overhead, and let's maintain a good customer service with our clients so they can come, they can come. Even if you make 50, 50 bullets profit, if you get hundred thousands of that, you're gonna beat Alex. I can beat Alex who get $1 profit and he's getting 10 people. Yeah, so I'll leave it to that. You guys can wrap it up. but. This is a very important topic. I'm glad mm -hmm. we hit business today because our people. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. Um, yeah, you, you know, I, I, I just said uh, sometime, you know, this uh, is just, it's just, you know, I think this is just people need to be also very careful. Because they used to say the money is in great. Uh, a lot of spending with just, you know, uh, and then the next thing is many people spend or have more debts uh, and they are having a lot of money. It's also a, a way of miscalculation, you know, because I cannot spend more than what I, what is coming in, you know, it's very dangerous. And, and making a business the same thing, you know, that's why I said, don't go to your 10%, leave that 10% there. This is for emergency. <laughs> and, and, and then saving for you in three years, you never know, uh, you can still leave it. And it will be thousands. You know, ne never underestimate that. And then uh, it happened to many people. They, uh, people. they all say they are rich, but they are poor because uh, they are rich and having also another standard of living. You understand? So at the end, the money that is coming in and what you are spending, it will be a difference. And then that's it. It happened to a lot of stars and because of bad management, you know, because they are also after their money. You know, they will not give you good uh, advices as a star because they want to leave. So people should be very careful about bad friends and people who discourage you. You have to be confident to yourself. You know, everybody can make it, especially in Gambia. You know, you just need to take these strategies, look for a product, what people would buy, and then try to purchase that cheaper so that your margin will be higher, you know, and ask yourself who needs it and why they need it. Because the, pe the, the, the reason people buy is to solve their problems. If you have a product, what can solve the problems of the people, you are lucky. That's the best product. And then you try a place, comfortable place where you will be maybe the only person, then you have a very good start, you know? That will help and always rinse and repeat. The same technique, you will make it, you know? I think it was going to be good also when the government can also help these people with some kind of scholarship investment, something like that. 
so that young people can make a start also, you know, because starting a business is the starting side uh, years is always the most, you know, you have to sacrifice a lot. Like Sawane said, you have to use your hours, you know, you have to walk like you're working for somebody. You, you have to even work more until things uh, start to function, then you can relax. But the first months or years, 60 hours a day is normal. You know, if you mean it very, very seriously and you have to sacrifice yourself, it's not easy. I know that everything will be better when everything goes, you know, and let nobody try to discourage you with your plan. This is very, very, very quick in our society in Gambia. You know, that's why I said you, know, you have the, the problem of society, the environment, you know, and things like that, which, which is a big problem for many people to make business in the country. Mm -hmm. Even your product you're selling, if you don't mind, people will be trying to caricature you with your product. You understand? So if you are not strong, you will even give up. And they are not going to give you money, which is very unfair also. So we have to stop that. When we see people are trying to proceed with something, we try to support them and don't, don't try to discourage them. Give them tips and help them because maybe they, later they are going to help you in talk. So never underrate any business person. Even the person selling tomatoes at market, you know, that's how foreigners do it. They come, they, they start with one product. They, they, they start with just a small table at the corner, you know. But using this principle, I mean, these tips I gave you, that's how they also try to come up. The next day you'll see they, 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 they'll have a bigger table. You know, next day they'll have a salt. Next day they'll, 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 they'll buy their tickets and, and fly to Canada. That's why they come to Gambia as a stepping stone. You know, and when they come, they don't have that society problem. The Gambians are having because nobody knows them. Nobody can laugh at them. Nobody can discourage them. So they have better chances even than Gambia because we have this society and, and environmental problems. You understand? So these are things we have to push away, have a positive mindset, and then go because what others can do, we can do it better, especially in our own country. But we need to work on these things mindset, you know, and the environment and then our concept. And dedication it will be okay so thank you very much thank you alice um your final words sam you know i uh thank you alice and thank you um mr swan as well um i'll just say that uh, anybody that's willing to open a business in gambia there is a lot to learn there's a lot to really uh, think about and also do consultation before you jump into business because if you just get into business because you want to make money you're going to fail and and and, and just like uh, Sawana said to your point too um, these are things that are not taught in school they're not taught in school you can go to school and get a master's degree uh, you still don't know certain things in business you're not going to know a whole lot that's why there is a, a, a specific area and like I said, that's why uh, for my we, uh, company, I Sam, was lucky. I call myself lucky Sam, to be, yeah. Yeah, do you know, like, there's a lot of educated people who die poor? Who, who what? Who dies poor? Oh, I, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. A lot of them die poor because they don't know how to do things, you know. You can't go to school and uh, go to college and get a master's degree and think, uh, you know everything. No, you don't. You don't know everything. So it's, it's, it's always best to keep a low profile and, and go after educating knowledge, you know, seek information, try to get information from people that have the experience in it. You know, you know, and a perfect example is, you know, like I said, in my company, there's been a number of years that I was a training specialist. And as a training specialist, you, you think about a, a person from Gambia, uh, standing in front of a classroom with people that just graduated from college or they've graduated from college and worked somewhere else, they still have some experience, but when they want to get into an industry, to our industry, they come to, to teach them all the things that they need to know to run a business from uh, operational standpoint and know how the operation overview how to uh, uh, how the business uh, overview is to a financial concept 
safety, because you have to think about safety of employees and customers as well in business. You know, you think about environmental compliance because these can cost you money in your business. You think about human resources. Human resources, you need to be able to know how to manage people to avoid uh, uh, liability, certain liability costs. You know, that is it's going to end up biting you in the courts, like uh, harassment, discrimination, retaliation, uh, uh, and all of that. This is all part of that. Um, marketing and merchandising, just like what Mr. Sawani was saying about, uh, you know, how do you do promotions? That's included in the marketing and merchandising. Those days, I was standing in front of the people and tell them different strategies, how to you know, buy one, get one free, buy one, get a second, a second one half off or, or a second one for a dollar and things like all the marketing and merchandising strategies, product placement. How do you place the project in the store? What, when people walk into your store, how do they travel? Do they go left or do they go right? What product should I put on the right? What product should I put on the left? What product should I put on the top shelf? What should go in the middle shelf? What should go at the bottom shelf? These are all part of marketing and merchandising. And then, uh, you know, and, and of course, uh, leadership skills. You cannot be a leader and run a business and not have leadership skills that you can lead people. These were all things. And uh, uh, loss prevention. You've got to know how to prevent loss. If not, you will be in a big hole. All right. Loss prevention is important. And, and, and not to mention all of them, but uh, uh, one important thing is the customer service. Like Sawana said, customer service is, is, is the number one priority that you have to follow, safety, customer, and process, and do all that. So that's why it used to take a whole, it takes a whole week for someone from college to come and sit in my class to go subject by subject, area by area, and uh, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. The next day, I give them a test, and I grade their test. At the end of the week, I printed a certificate and give it to them and certify them before they can become managers. So these are things, just to reiterate what Sawana said, these are things you're not gonna learn from school. You cannot go to any school and learn all of this. You've got to talk to people like Alice, people like mm -hmm. Sawana, you know, and, and, and be able to, you know, you, know, that are in business. <laughs> you know, people that are in business, people that have done this and that have experienced this and, and do some consultation, do your homework before you start a business. So at the end of the day, I just wanna wrap it up that way. Uh, but want to thank both of you for your time. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, all the viewers watching these will really thank have you, something to get from here. And, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't be afraid to ask questions at any time. Thank you. I mean, these are nuggets. Uh, even business people don't always tell, tell these secrets. So I think it's very good for our people to know it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. I think this is a wonderful discussion. Um, I think one thing we should look into also is um ex, you know cutting on expenses how to save money because i feel like we are you know we have that issue not you know only in the gambia but in the um in the people of color you know in in our def, definitely in our um in our society so thank you guys this is a great conversation i hope the viewers have a takeaway and we're going to share the videos and uh you know hopefully people can benefit from and that the government can also gain something from it um, to encourage people to do business. So, yeah. okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. For, thank you. Thank All you right. Time, <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. We catch up next week. Take care. Sure. Thank you. All right. Take care.